Makeup tutorial for this gorgeous natural work appropriate look, uni appropriate look, everyday appropriate look, autumn appropriate look. It is so many appropriate looks, I swear you could wear it on any occasion. Even a date night appropriate look this could be. Because it's very natural, very flattering. So this look is perfect for oily skin girls and guys because I am oily skin, so I use products that help keep me matte, but also get that glowy skin effect. So if you guys also like have quite dry skin, this is also a great look for you. You just have to swap the other products out to fit your kind of skin type. But the techniques I've used, you can basically use this on any skin type. Basically it'll work perfectly. So if you guys are interested in how I got this fantastic natural look right here, then please stay watching. Hey fam! So let's get straight into this look. So I, like I said in the beginning, it's beginner appropriate. So if you guys are like really new beginners and you're not sure how to do your face makeup or you're not sure what looks to do because you're very new to the whole makeup scene, then this tutorial is perfect for you. I use very minimal products and I don't do very hard techniques. So they're really simple, really straightforward. So let's get to it. Oh yeah. So because I have quite oily skin I get quite large pores in like the center of my face and things like that so I'm going to go in with my baby skin instant pore eraser if you guys don't find you have very big pores or anything like that then you guys can just prime your face however you like what I do is I just squeeze some on my fingers I like kind of press it together to warm up the product so that it applies better onto my pore areas Make sure you guys aren't applying this like all over your face because it's going to do nothing. It's just a waste of product and you don't want to apply too many products on your face because that's when you start to get caking is when you have too many products sitting on the skin. So just apply it to the center of the face where you get pores and that should, that's it. It's all you need to do. You don't need to apply it all over the face because it isn't like a primer. It's just to help hide those pores. So for priming my skin, I'm going to go in with my Skin Tenavia Makeup Primer Spray in Oil Control. There's ones that are for dry skin, for brides. If you guys are a bride and you're like, oh, I want to get all fancy and get a good primer and stuff like that. There's heaps of different ones on the site. So you can go visit Skin Tenavia. They have so many different primers and I really, really like their primers because all you have to do is just spray it on and it helps the foundation and makeup last all day. It's fantastic. So I'm going to be applying this all over my face, just spritzing it on there. And then just fan it in, baby. Fan it in. So once we've done our priming, we can go on to the skin, like the foundation and things like that. I'm going to go in with my Revlon Color Stay Foundation in the shade Medium Beige. And it's the oil control one, so it's a combination oil and it's a combination dry as well. If you guys are normal to dry, but I am normal to oily. So I'm going to go in with a couple pumps of this. You guys can just use one. You can do as like much coverage as you want. I want a more like sheer to medium coverage. Because that's just my personal preference. But if you guys want a really sheer coverage, then just go in with like half a pump to a pump and apply it from the center to your face and work out. The reason why we apply it to the center of our face and work out is because the most deal is discoloration is usually on the center, and then as you work out it gets less discolored and it's more like smooth, I guess. So that's why I recommend it. But if you guys get acne or something, then you can, you know, apply it on those areas more heavily, like go in with a second coat on those areas. But just go in with your first coat of foundation and just apply it to the center, like I said. And if you do have, you know, if you do need more coverage, then by all means go in with more coverage. But don't go in like too heavy handed because it's easier to apply product than take away product. So just go in a little bit at a time and just work it into the skin. And then see if you need to apply more. Also make sure you go all the way up to the hairline and down to your neck and like bring it down a little bit so that you don't have that sexy demarcification line around your face. Or just use whatever's left on the sponge and kind of just conceal up any you know discoloration. I am going to go in with concealer but I just like to use whatever's left on the sponge to kind of prep the eyes a little bit more. And can you just see, you can kind of see like all my imperfections and stuff, like not all of them, but it's concealed, like I wanted a medium coverage, I don't want full coverage, so I do still want kind of those freckles and like imperfections showing through a little bit, it's just covered up like the redness and like 
you know, a few bits here and there, just like things that I want covered up, I'll cover up, but I do like a more natural look on a day-to-day -day basis, or like, for like more of a date night look, or like a work look, uni look, something like that, like just so that it looks like my skin, but better. So next for concealer, I finally got a new concealer, yay! I'm going in with my e.l.f. concealer in the shade Light Beige. And this is like super cheap. So like a lot of the products that I am using are really, really cheap. The probably mo the most expensive thing would be the primer spray. That's probably it. Everything else is drugstore, so you can afford it. Like it's not expensive. It's not like you have to go out of your way to pay for it. It's actually quite cheap. So that's why I like to use these products because they are more of an everyday look like basis. And if you guys are on a budget like me, these are perfect because... They're not too expensive to purchase. So I'm going to grab this concealer and apply it underneath my eyes, on my eyelids, and also on any trouble spots that I want to kind of conceal up a bit more. So like, you know, blemishes or pimples or like all that kind of jazz. Next, I'm taking my Classics Loose Translucent Powder and I'm just taking a little bit of that on my Beauty Blender sponge and just like press that over the concealer area so it helps set my concealer in place and it literally doesn't crease like all day. It's so good. Like, I'm not baking. I'm just pressing this little bit of powder underneath my eyes. Like if you're an oily girl or guy out there, it just helps set your concealer in place and it stops the oil seeping through and making you look greasy. And then I'll also grab a little more, a little bit more, like just a smidgen. And I'm just gonna like press it over my pore areas to help blur them out. And I swear, this just does not move all day. Like, I look flawless, but natural. And you can't see my pores or anything. They just look blurred out, so they look so smooth. Next, I'm going to take my Fit Me Press Powder in 135 and just set the rest of my foundation with a light layer of this. If you guys, like, don't have a press powder or anything, then just go with that loose powder. Like, you don't need to have every single product that I'm using. Just use the loose powder and just lightly dust it over your face and set your foundation in place. I'm just going to go in with this because I feel it just sets my foundation in place a lot better. It's all to personal preference, guys. As you do your makeup, you kind of learn different ways, like, your skin works. Because everyone is different, so you want to use products that benefit your skin, not, like the exact same stuff that I use because my skin is different to your skin. And I also like to set the foundation just underneath like my neck, like my chin onto my neck in place as well. There we go. For brows, I thought I'd keep it really simple because a lot of you aren't used to filling in your brows and if it's on the go really quick look, you want to keep this really quick and not have to fiddle with your brows. So what I like to do is I like to go in with a tinted brow gel just to quickly like comb over the brow hairs because I do feel like it is necessary especially if you've like put foundation all over your face and you've got like powder or foundation in your brow hairs you don't want that sitting there because it makes your brows look duller and just like like not nice so I like to go with a tinted brow gel just to clean them up a little bit comb them upwards just kind of give them a bit of neatness a bit of structure a bit of color all that good stuff so I'm going to go in with my Rimmel brow this way like brow styling gel so make sure to keep a light hand on the front of the brow, very light hand. And then as you go towards the tail end, you can use more pressure, like heavy pressure, to make it darker, because that's the natural kind of tone of the brow. The front of the brow is always lighter than the tail. So make sure that you're not making it all one colour because that's when you can start to look a bit funny. This is in the shade dark brown by the way guys. And do you guys just see the difference between one and the other? Like it's a bit fuller, a bit darker. And it just gives it, it brings a lot of life back to the brow basically. It's like doing CPR on it, trying to revive it because it can get a little bit lost with all the powder and foundation sitting on it. And there you guys have it, that's the brows done and dusted. Like it doesn't take much technique or skill at all, you're just combing through some tinted brow gel. You don't have to fluff around with like pomades or powders or pencils, it's just so easy, so quick and you're like done and dusted. So for the eyes, I'm keeping it super simple. So I'm just going to grab my 350 Morphe palette and I'm grabbing this brown shade from the palette. It's just a nice shade to put in my crease because it's just going to deepen it up a little bit without being too obvious or intense. It's very subtle. 
If you guys have darker skin tones, then use something darker. If you have a lighter skin tone, then use something lighter. Basically, just grab a brown tone shade, a couple shades darker than your natural skin tone. And I'm literally a blind. Blind. I'm literally applying barely any pressure. I'm just adding a subtle shadow to the crease to give the eye a bit of dimension. So don't just blop a whole bunch of product onto your crease area because then you're going to spend ages trying to blend it through. I just add a little bit and then I blend that through and if I want to deepen it up, I'll add a bit more. And I'm using a 228 Zoeva brush for this. Okay, so the last shadow that I'm going to use is this gorgeous, like, champagne-y, shimmery shadow from the 350 palette. I'm just going to place that all over my lid. This is perfect if you guys are going on a date night or anything like that with your partner because boys love shimmer on the lid. Just a very subtle, like, emphasis because it just emphasizes your girly features. And it's just very gorgeous and very complimenting. And it's not too intense of a color. It's just very subtle very gorgeous and I'm packing it all over the lid with a Zoeva 232 brush feel free to build up the pigmentation as much as you like I am just gonna keep it to about like this kind of intensity because I'm going to go in with a highlighter after it's on the lid just to make it more glowy to go with that kind of glowy feel to the look okay I'm just gonna blend through the crease a little bit to help those two shadows blend into one another. So next I'm going in with some mascara. I'm going to go in with my Mega Plush Volumizing Mascara from Maybelline and just coat my lashes nice and thickly in that. Once I've done that, I'm going to go in with some very natural, very like fluffy lashes. If you guys aren't comfortable with applying lashes, then just keep it to your natural lashes and move on to the next step. But I love lashes, so I'm going to go in with my BYS Captivating Lashes. Now I do recommend like using a proper lash glue, not the one that comes with these lashes. It's just a hot mess trying to apply on lashes with like bad lash glue, like cheap lash glue. So I do really recommend using like a proper lash glue to apply lashes. It just makes your life so much easier. And I'm just using the Duo Lash Glue, the clear one to apply it. And I love these lashes because they're kind of just like my lashes but better type of lashes. So they just extend like the lashes just a bit more and they're very flirty. So if you guys are game enough, I like to go over my lash band. Doesn't matter if it's a clear lash band or a, you know, a black, like thick lash band. I always like to go over it with a bit of like um, black eyeshadow just to cover up the lash band and help it mesh into my natural lashes better. And I don't put it on the actual lid area. I just coat the lash band in it very subtly. And I'll just bring it along the inner corner lash line so that it helps, you know, deepen up that lash line a bit more and also help blend the falsies and the natural lashes together in that inner corner area and it also just helps conceal up any of that lash glue that may be poking through there. I love this brush because it just makes it so easy to do. If you have a more thicker brush then it's just hard because it's like making too like thick of a line, you need to blend it out. So just go in with something very petite and precise and it makes your life hella easier. So I'm literally just going to place on some bottom lash mascara to finish off the eyes. I'm not going to do anything with the lower lash line today. I'll just keep it easy for you guys. I'll just, just keep it easier. So I'm going to go in with my NYX contour kit to contour and bronze up the face. No, I don't want to bronze today. Do it. Nah, I'll keep it simple. I'm just going to go in and contour the face today. So I'm going to go in with my NYX contour kit today and just grab the sculpt shade from the kit. It's a gorgeous cool tone brown shade. And you're basically just going to create a subtle shadow underneath the cot like the what are they called? Cheekbones. Because you don't want anything like boom, there's a solid line going on there. You want something very subtle. Place that close to the hairline. Make a fish face if you need to to kind of define where your cheekbones are. And just kind of like wiggle that product in there very slowly just building up slightly and you're going on the angle from the top of your ear to the corner of your mouth so like on this angle right here and the deeper that you bring it in so the longer the contour line the deeper the contour so if you want a very soft contour keep it focused here if you want a more deeper structured contour bring it all the way to the corner of your mouth 
I'm gonna meet like halfway in between those, so just put it out there. And I also bring it to the side of my temple, so when I do my forehead, it's more of like a number three shape going on, so it's like boom, boom. And I also hit my forehead, like I said before, so in that kind of three shape that we've got going on. And then, like I said, bring it down from that contour into that jaw. I also like to bring it down my neck a little bit so that it's not all focused on the face, but it's also on the body as well. I'm just going to go in really quickly and just contour my nose. So once I've contoured, I'm going to go in with my Beauty Blender and just diffuse the product a little bit so it looks more natural and it sinks into the skin better because it helps the product to melt in when you use a damp sponge or beauty blender. To add a bit of glow to the skin, a very natural glow, we're going to go in with the Nectar shade from the NYX Contour Kit. It's a gorgeous peachy kind of champagne shade and it is very, very natural on the skin. So I'm going to apply that on all the high points where you naturally get a bit of shine to the skin, so above the brow, on the high points of your cheekbone, nose, like Cupid's bow, all those kinds of places. And I'm just going back in with a eyeshadow brush and I'm just placing a more focused highlight on those areas. I just like doing that more sheer glow with a bigger brush and then a more intense glow on the very, very high points. Next for some colour, I'm going in with my 9N Naturally Blush Palette by Morphe. I'm taking that middle shade right smack bam in the very middle of the palette and it's a gorgeous like peachy bronzy shade with flecks of gold in it so it's going to add a bit of glow to the skin as well because this is a very glowy look and I'm placing it on the contours of my face and bringing whatever's left just to the front where the apples are but I want most of it focused here and I'll bring it up also whatever's left in the brush up the sides of my temples and then just dot whatever's left in the brush just on the outer temple, like the outer forehead and nose and a bit on the chin just to kind of give that colour like a bit of an all-rounder kind of feel. Lastly, I'm going in for highlight, like a more intense highlight. I'm using my Merry Luminizer by The Balm. This is optional. If you guys just like how it is, then you can just skip to the lips. But I like a more intense glow and I did this on my friend's like the other day and they looked amazing like we went out for dinner and they all were glowing so amazing like like very natural kind of glow so I'm going in with an eyeshadow brush and I'm just taking it a little bit on my brush top off the excess and just lightly build it up to your desired glow and I like to use two highlighters like I did just before when I'm using a more in any situation right now really it's my favorite go-to's because they just create such a natural finish to the highlight. It doesn't actually look like powder, it actually looks like a natural like luminous and kind of glow. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. And with that Merry Luminizer I'm going to place that on my lids as well to give it a bit of extra pop and zazz because I feel like it is pretty with that champagne shimmery colour but I want something extra just on the eyes because it makes it look so so beautiful. And also apply it to your inner corners, so the inner corner of your eye to open up the eyes and make them look more awake. And I also hit the very high points of my brow bone. So for lips, it's really optional, all up to you. I'm going to do a brown lip today, but you can do a more natural lip. You can just go with a lip balm or conditioner and leave it at that. If you want a more intense look, if it's more of a date night look, then I'd probably go in with a liquid lipstick just because it'll last longer, it'll stay true to its colour like better and it also flatters the look really well as, as well. But I'm actually going to go in, like I said, for a brown lip today and I'm using the e.l.f. Blushing Brown Lipstick. It's a gorgeous warm tone brown and I love brown especially because it is autumn, the season for like browns and deep reds and oh, I'm so excited. So this is why I'm going in with a gorgeous brown shade today. And if you do make a little bit of a mistake, like you bring your lipstick out too far, just grab a flat concealer brush and some of your foundation and just fix it up. To finish off the look, I'm going in with my Scandinavia Makeup Finishing Spray and Oil Control as well. You guys can do with, use whatever, you know, finishing spray you want or don't use a finishing spray, it's up to you. 
but I do recommend a finishing spray because it will help your makeup to last a lot longer. Yeah, but oh, it smells so good. And this is the finished makeup look. So I hope you guys enjoyed this makeup tutorial today. I had so much fun creating it for you guys. It's super natural, super easy. So I hope all you beginners out there who are new to makeup and aren't sure like how to apply a natural look, like you don't want to go too intense because it is like your first few times doing makeup or you just want a more natural look, then I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful. Make sure to like this video if you did find it helpful and you did like it and subscribe right here to my face. <gasps> I'd love you to join my YouTube fan bam. And if you guys are interested in seeing some more of my videos, then I'll leave my most recent upload right, right here somewhere. So right here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next tutorial. Bye guys.